Well, the Tour of Britain may not have quite the Herculean demands for cyclists imposed by the Tour de France. But as the top teams gather strength for the World Championships in September, one Belgian rider will look back on yesterday's first stage with fond memories. Edrink Redin, usually a domestique or a secondary rider, to Johan Museo in the Lotto team. But as the tour began in Dundee, fate had a different role in store for the 29-year-old Redin. British rider Dave Mann, back after racing in the USA, broke clear at the start. Moving up was Australian Alan Piper of the Tulip squad. Then last year's champion Phil Anderson of Motorola passed his compatriot en route to one of the day's sprint bonuses. Just over 92 kilometres were on the schedule for the first day's racing. And with seven laps of the 39 left, Hedrink Redon made his move. Breaking away from the British rider, Lily White, the Belgian proved unbeatable despite the efforts of the 96 men in pursuit. The rider from Linove in Flanders had four seconds to spare over the remainder of the field. Former East German amateur Olaf Ludwig for Panasonic coming up second. Sprint bonuses put Redon eight seconds ahead of the German overall. Johan Mazur, the top sprinter of the Lotto team, was 11 seconds down on his victorious teammate, the same as Alan Piper and Phil Anderson, a further second back. Riders face another 800 kilometres of riding before the finish in Leeds on Friday. Well, at the first day, this today's results. Second stage won by Schiandri of Italy, Van der Poppel of Netherlands second, Imoden, Swede, Switzerland in third, puts Schiandri way out in front. Yesterday, the Kellogg's Tour raced into England, where at Gateshead it found an Italian winner who was born in Derby. Max Schiandri, in winning the stage, became the new leader by three seconds. Today, the race on the glorious 12th mingles with the grouse on the North York Moors, and Skiandri is the target. I really love to win a, a stage race, you know, I never, I've been close to it many times, second, third places, but I never won a stage race, so this could be a good position. Hello and welcome again to the 500 miles Kellogg's Tour of Britain as it makes its way towards its finish in Leeds on Friday. But today we're in Middlesbrough, the race now going 103 miles to Humberside, where it will end in the city of Hull. It's a tough stage today, 103 miles. It takes in the big climb on the North York Moors, the climb of Rosedale Chimney. Let's remind ourselves of the overall situation this morning. In the lead, Max Giandri by just three seconds after that stage win yesterday from Jos van Ert. In third place, Adri van der Poel, a Dutchman, seven seconds behind. And in fourth place, the first day stage winner, Hendrik Redant, who is eight seconds down. Fifth, the former Olympic champion and leader of the World Cup, Olaf Ludwig of Germany. He's 16 seconds back. Well, yesterday, Max Giandri went to the top. And here's Paul Showy now to explain to you how a team, and a teammate in particular, helped him get there. The Motorola team yesterday adopted a classic tactic, although it was probably not premeditated. When Sean Yates joined Dominic Krieger at the front of the race on Bonchester Hill, their lead rapidly exceeded one minute. Such a time gap put the onus on the Lotto team, whose man Henrik Redant was the leader of the race, and they had to organise the chase behind the two. They did this well with the classic style we've seen many times over the past month, with each team member taking it in turn to force the pace at the front. Eventually, Yates and Krieger were caught, but the severity of the chase tired out the Lotto team so much that towards the end of the stage, Yates' teammate, Max Chiandri, was able to jump away to take not only the stage victory, but the leader's yellow jersey. The first day in the, in the yellow jersey, it's going to be quite hard. We 
because uh, I don't really know the course. But um, you can see we have uh, three hills here concentrated in uh, 30 kilometers. And uh, this is the Rosedale chimney. It's, uh, it's going to be quite hard uh, as I hear. Um, Sean Yates has been telling me he's been, he ride it uh, three years ago. So I'm just gonna see if I can get over here with the first guys and then uh, keep an eye on uh, Ludwig and uh, Mustel and Van der Poel. I mean, that's gonna be the three guys I have to keep an eye on. And then just do my best with the team. And there's one or two other names you should watch out for as well. Max Johan Museo, 18 seconds back in sixth place. Sean Yates is there in 14th. Robert Miller, 19th. And Greg Lamond at two and a half minutes down in 79th position. And as Phil Anderson looks at the route ahead today, Greg Lamond has not signed on this morning. He says uh, he's not feeling well, but in fact, I think his morale is very low after his unfortunate to his Tour de France. The field rolling out on a difficult course today. At the back of this field, Brian Holm is chatting with Alan Piper, and I wonder what he's saying. He says he's going to attack, but we better watch him. I don't like the sound of this, it looks too difficult. All these guys have got a 26 rocket on the back, that's a really small gear. And we've only got a 24. Ah! But Brian's got his Adidas sneakers in his back pocket in case he has to run up there. Dropped his drop day. <laughs> well, Alan Piper back in the race, and as we watch the field go here, in fact, Brian Holm has attacked. As we head out, leaving Middlesbrough now and heading up towards the first climb of the day at Stanghow Moor, and there is a little group forming at the front as well, Paul. Well, there's a little group chasing them down there, but when they get to the climb, it's very, very difficult because over the top of the climb, they're straight onto the moors, and there's a big crosswind, and this is Brian Holm forcing the pace at the front, but there's a group of three riders chasing behind. Now, that could be very dangerous if they can make contact with Brian Holm. And Holm is making full use of this strong westerly wind that's blowing today, but it'll be on his face when we get onto the moors. We're heading now into Gisborough. The first sprint of the day, just four miles covered. Weather conditions changeable, the forecast today. Temperature a little bit on the cool side, 18 degrees. The skies are blue at the moment. And this is the sprint in Gisborough, and Brian Holm is making full use of the wind, Paul. He's well clear. He's got a good gap at the moment, but that group of three behind is now four riders. I think the news is coming over to us. But when they get to this climb, it's going to be very difficult. We'll look back down the road to see the sprint here. Looks like Abdu Japarov coming up at the front. Scott Sunderland in second place. Actually, that's rather interesting. He's Scott Sunderland in the action, with Abdu Japarov making easy work of that. There's confirmation of the sprint. Five points for Brian Holm. No bonuses, by the way, on this sprint. They come later on the course. And the four riders have now got together as we go out towards the moors. The fourth man, second in line here, is Pierre Erin. And he is making up quite an interesting quartet. Definitely a good working group at the moment. It's interesting to see Abdi Japarov moving into the breakaways. Maybe he's trying to get a few points here for this uh, hotspot sprint competition. They've got a good lead as we look back down the road there. But I'm quite sure that when we get down in there, we'll see it'll be the Motorola team at the front organizing the chase. Well, there's a nice little echelon forming at the front, and they're all jerseys which are blue, and that's the sign they are Motorola. Their object now will be to try and keep them in close proximity to those four leads. This is Jan Schur on the front, keeping the pace nice and high, and he's the main workhorse on the team at the moment. When they get round the corner on this climb, it gets a lot harder, and it'll be very difficult for them to keep working because it's so steep that they'll just be trying to get over the top of the climb. And when they get to the top, they've got those terrible side winds to contend with. Well, this is the first climb, a little tester as we go off towards the moors. This is Stanghow Moor, but it's a main road climb, as you can see, and our helicopter shots here are lowering it out because it is actually quite a steep climb, as you can see here, with Herin out of the saddle, followed by Brian Holm, Abdu Japarov, and sitting there at the back, Scott Sunderland, the Australian. There's the new Lotto professional, and he looks as though he's going to be quite a useful man too. He's been in the action most days in the Kellogg's Tour, without a lot of reward at the moment, but he's in the group right now. Jean-Luc Vandenbroek, the team manager of the Lotto team, does a very good job in actually looking for these young riders and tries to build up his team every year with bringing up the young riders, usually from Belgium sources. And Vandenbroek, by the way, an ex-teammate of Paul Sherwin's when they used to race together on the Lara Duke team. And Chris Lillywhite setting the pace here, thinking of the rider in white behind there, because that's Brian Smith, the leader of the King of the Mountains. 200 metres to go, and Sunderland has attacked, and no reaction from the other three. He's gone well from the back of the group there. So the Australian going clear, takes a little look over his shoulder. He started his season very, very well this year with a fifth place in Milan San Remo, the big classic in Italy, and he comes over the line with a clear lead. I don't think he'll go on. I think he'll wait for the others to rejoin 
because it would be folly to try and hold them off for the next 95 miles. There's the result over the first climb. Six points for Scott Sunderland. Home is second. Abdu Japarov, a little bit of a surprise there. He's in third place. Brian Smith, the leader of the mountains, in fifth. And now this is looking like it's the Motorola team, Paul. It's their job now to bring that breakaway back. Well, it's a very dangerous group. There's four riders in the break there, and if they work well together, it looks as if they have worked well together, and they're going to bring that group of four back into the fold. Interesting to see Phil Anderson already to the fore, helping to work for Max Chiandri. Last year's winner, don't forget Phil Anderson, now playing the role of a domestique for his new team leader, Max Chiandri. Just under 22 miles an hour, you saw there, and that is slow, but the wind has now changed direction, and look at the echelons forming, and that is caused by the wind direction and somebody leaving a gap between the wheels. What they're all trying to do is they're swinging across to the, ref the left-hand side of the road to shelter each other, and that's the only thing they can do. But now, as we get onto the smaller roads, it's going to be very difficult to form these echelons as we get the acceleration here of the, side of the climb of Danby Beacon. Well, this is Cesare Zamana, who's leading out here, a Polish professional rider on the American Subaru team. And right behind him, I saw Brian Smith, who's taking him on. But they've climbed this hill so quickly because of the wind up behind them. And just look at this. This is a very, very steep climb. And yet they've come over almost together. Zamana first over the top. Winterberg it was in second place. And Brian Smith scoring well in third. But just look at this, Paul. This is a crash on the descent. And Martin Early sitting up on the back there. And he looks as though he's quite hurt. Well, I think everybody was taking risks to get to the bottom of Rosedale Chimpley. You can see there number 71 is Jos van Aert, the rider who was fourth yesterday and second overall in the classification at the moment. But you can see the chaos as everybody is looking for wheels. But at the front of the race, they're fighting for position to go up this climb now. And this is Rosedale Chimney. And look at the marvellous crowd on it as well. Well, that was an unfortunate crash. It's happened just as they've approached this climb, which is the steepest climb of the day. You can see it just lying across the slopes here of the North York Moors. And what a marvellous crowd waiting to welcome the Tour de France riders in the Kellogg's Tour de Britain. Nice steady climb here, Tiddy Claverola setting the pace, former King of the Mountains in the Tour de France. I think you'd be surprised to see the kind of climbs that we have here in Britain. He's setting a good pace at the front, but there are one or two riders struggling at the back there. Martin Early's up and away again. Got a big lump on his head at the moment. It's Brian Smith there in third place in defence of his lead in the King of the Mountains. Second place is again the Polish rider who's been riding well today, Zemana. I remember Zemana in 1987, winning three stages of the Commonwealth Bank Classic in Australia. He turned professional in 1990. The back of the race now, and Alan Piper, well, he's not talking to us at the moment, so one has to assume, Paul, he's under pressure here. Well, I don't think Bruce, as I like to call him, is going to be too happy with this climb. He's really suffering quite a lot here, but I think he'll be OK if he can stay in contact with this group and get over the top. We'll see a lot more of Alan Piper later on, but you can see everyone is suffering on this climb. Every rider is just trying to get up as best they possibly can. On the left hand of the picture there was Brian Holm, the first man to attack today. So Holm now in a little bit of trouble. Jan Shaw, who did all the chase down for Brian Holm, number seven. He's also in trouble on the climb. Chris Lillywhite only a little bit further up. And this is Flavio Giapponi, who's just also uh, dropped away from our picture. But just look at this wonderful crowd here. It's a very, very windy here on Rosedale Chimney. Oh, and there's a problem here, and this indeed is Giuseppe Petito, who's decided it's quicker by foot as he starts to run up the hill now, and he is certainly surprised by these climbs. I think he's decided to give that up as a bad joke. He thinks he can probably walk up quicker than he can go up on his bike, but you can see how everybody is really suffering to get up this climb here. And for Johan Lamets, the faithful teammate of Greg Lamond, who's now out of this race, he too is struggling on the climb. There's Brian Holm. In the lead, one minute, then being pushed up Rosedale Chimney the next, and I hope the referees aren't looking. Well, I hope they turn a blind eye because these riders need a little bit of help to get over the top here. Now we go to the front of the race. We've got the leaders approaching the top of the climb. Looks and like certain. Phil Anderson in second place. Sorry there, Phil. And I think it's Zamana again from the Subaru team. In fact, there are two Subaru riders here, so I will presume that the leader is, in fact, Heinz Imboden, 55 it is. And look at this, Zamana's gone from the back. Well, Imboden will not react because the man is his teammate and he's building points too to take over the lead here in the King of the Mountains. Zamana goes over the top in first place and he, I wasn't too sure whether Inverdon beat Phil Anderson there for the second slot. Let's have a look back down the road. There's the rest of the field. Well, they haven't broken up quite as I expected. Oops, dearie me. Well, there's one or two sheep on the course today, I can tell you. And this is Joss Van Aert, who's still climbing back to the race, second overall this morning. And involved in that crash, he's still got to catch up with the race as they go over the top of the climb of Rosedale Chimney. There's the result, Zamana first 12 points, 
Pines inward in second and Phil Anderson in third place. Yates doing well in sixth place. Now, this is Max Giandri changing his wheel. He hasn't punctured. In fact, he wants to change the ratio of his gears now that the big climb is behind him. So Max Giandri has got higher gears on his bike now as we race off the moors and head down towards the finish. We'll take a break. But they all said we needed 26, but I, I think we were pretty good with 24 anyway. Over the top, there was little groups going away in the side wind. I just had my intuition session for the day. I got a piece of intermission that said there was going to be a crash. And on the descent before the Rosedale chimney, about five guys went down and into the wall, and I heard that Martin Early had hit his head against the wall, so I hope he's all right. And someone came behind me and pushed me right into this... Uh, what do you call it? Cow dung. And I've got it all over my hands here, all over my shoes here. It's everywhere. Anybody for your cow dung sandwich? <laughs> what a character he is. Well, we moved along the road now, 54 miles covered. This is the climb of East Hesterton Brow. It's a third category climb. And Eric Van Lanker is forcing a little lead here. Chris Lillywhite is up in this leading group as well. And by the way, just to put Alan's mind at rest, Martin Early is not injured. He has a lump on his head, though. And Jos van Aert has also got back into that big field. So at the moment, he's saving his second place overall in the race. Well, a serious little move this at the moment as well. This is Eric van Lanker on the front. Second place from the Banana Met team is Chris Lillywhite. A little bit further back in the pink jersey was Hendrik Redant, the first wearer of the yellow jersey in this race. And that's what's causing the concern, Paul, because Redant is fourth overall, and the Motorola boys, Michel Denis on the left, Sean Yates in the white British champion's jersey is here too. They have now got to bring that breakaway back. It is dangerous. It's a very dangerous move. Van Lanker, always a very clever rider too. I think uh, the Helvetia rider here is... Uh, Probably Guido Winterberg or Dominic Krieger. No, Dominic Krieger. It's Dominic Krieger on the right in the sunglasses. And this little group is coming back, you know. Van Lanker is the great climber. We know him from old in Britain. He's a winner of the Wincanton Classic. And that comes up, don't forget, at the end of this week as well in Leeds. You can watch that with us on Channel 4. And all the stars of this race are going to be bolstered by a lot more coming in from Europe, including the great Claudio Chiapucci. Right now, we're watching another man who's been great in his career, Eric Van Lanker. And you can see his climbing style, Paul. He's pushing well clear now of Krieger, who was in the action yesterday and trying to stay in our picture today. Well, he's really putting the pressure on here, and you can see what I said earlier in the week. Henrik Redant has disappeared from the picture a little bit there, not one of the best climbers in the world. But the pressure on at the back here with the chasers. This is Terry Claverola on the front, lending a little bit of assistance. Sean Yates in the middle. The white jersey next to Sean Yates is Audrey van der Poel, the man who Max Yandri is a little bit scared about because he's a very clever sprinter. And he's riding well this week, too. He's looking for the victory, I feel. That's uh, Cesare Zamana again forcing his way into the picture. He's won two of the big climbs today, and he must now be challenging indeed Brian Smith for the overall lead in the King of the Mountains competition. There's a little idea of how high we are. As we go back up to the leaders, Krieger now forcing the pace with Van Lanker, and it looks as though Redant, the danger man, has been dropped by these two. That's him just creeping into our picture there, so Redant has been distanced by Van Lanker and Dominique Krieger. Two other riders have gone as well, Chris Lillywhite, as we've got uh, the top of the climb there. Eric Van Lanker takes it in front of Krieger and Henry Redant has improved quite a lot. He's passed the other two riders and I think he'll take third slot. Now we're coming up towards the sprint from this little group that's forming. Susanna, Sir, Susanna Zamana is going away. Cesare Zamana rather. And he is now heading up Tiri Clavarola. So these points I think are crucial. And if Brian Smith isn't scoring just behind, and I don't think he can be now because the leaders have gone over the top. No points for Smith on this climb. I think that will give Zamana, the overall lead in the King of the Mountains. In fact, Heinz Imboden coming to the top of the climb here, trying to protect the position of Zamana as they accelerate here. Terry Claverola in second place there. He's not too worried about the King of the Mountains here, and that is, in fact, Heinz Imboden that takes the place there. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Paul, and there's confirmation that he got the sixth place. Van Lanker was the winner, Krieger in second place. And there's the overall situation, a change. Brian Smith by two points is off the top, and Cesare Zamana is the new leader in the King of the Mountains competition. Well, that competition over for the day, but as this race unfolds on this road to Leeds on Friday, 
There's still plenty of more hills to come. And now this little group, which broke away on the climb, has caught up with the three leaders. Redant is back in the lead, and this is still bad news for the Motorola team and Shandri in particular. They're definitely going to have to work very hard to try and come back here. Claverola putting the pressure on there. Heinz Imboden, the man who challenged Phil Anderson all the way to the line last year. This is a very good group. They're going to have to organise themselves behind because this could be dangerous. It's very flat now on the run, on the run into Hull. Well, the Subaru Montgomery team are based in Dortmund this year. Are riding well. This is Brian Holm. Well, it's a day of ups and downs for Brian Holm here because he was in the lead one minute, then he was having trouble on Rosedale Chimney, and now you see he's got a back wheel puncture, but he's on the road. So he's on the way for all anyway. I don't think the mechanic's <laughs> going to be too happy there. The team manager panicked a bit and smacked him in the back there with the door, but Brian Holm will fight and get back into the main field. An exchange of words, I think, in the car. We're now into Beverly Paul, a wonderful crowd here in Beverly, and the whole town is locked up for the arrival of the Kellogg's Tour. Complete circuit of the town, culminating in a time bonus sprint, and this is Peter van Pietergum, who's trying to go clear now of the PDM team, and he's just ahead of the field, chasing a time bonus. Definitely three seconds, two seconds, and one second as they go over the line. He's trying to protect it, I think, for Jos van Aert to keep him up there in contention. But there's going to be a severe sprint for second place, that's for sure. Yes, I'm rather surprised. In fact, the Motorola's, I know they've been busy chasing down all of these attacks today, but I really thought they'd try to keep this field together because Max Giandri can handle himself in a sprint finish. But I think they've let this man get too much of a lead, and they have. He gets the three seconds bonus, which are not too important for Van Pietergum, but they are desperately important for Max Giandri. And now, in the sprint behind two, it still looks to... Well, there we are. Max Giandri did take second place and Zamana was in third slot. He gets a seconds bonus. Overall for the day, Max Chiandri still leads the Pop-Tart Sprint. That's the overall sprint series, as we now head on to the beautiful bridge here. But we're not going across it today, across the Humber Estuary. Instead, we're going down the Clive Sullivan Way and into Hull. Well, Clive Sullivan, one of the famous rugby league players from Hull, and it really is nice to bring the race down there because just last week, my uncle was named president of the Rugby League Association, so I'm quite pleased about that. A day for Uncle's Paul because Uncle Bernard is watching this race. We promised Max Chiandri we'd mention him because he's down in Bournemouth. Remember that Max spent the first six years of his life in Bournemouth. And the news is Uncle Bernard, by the way, will be up at the finish. But look at this. Look at the total confusion as to which way to go there by that leading group. And two riders have gone on the deck. One is Dave Mann. Looks like Dave Mann there in the pink jersey. It was a little bit of a surprise for the riders. They came onto the roundabout. Maybe they didn't see the arrows. And there was such a bit of confusion. They zigzag left and right. One or two went down, but I think they'll get back into the race here. In fact, that's really the impetus of that small group, just as it seemed to be going away. We've picked up the tailwind now. The westerly that slowed this race down all day is now bringing them into the city of Hull at very high speed indeed. Something like 35 miles an hour as they approach the finish here now. Abdu Jafarov is on the left, followed by Johan Museo. Abdu Jafarov takes it. The demon sprinter, the Tashkent terror they call him. That's the first time a CIS rider has ever won a stage in the Kellogg's Tour of Britain in six years. He did it so well. Let's look at that again now as he comes from the left of our picture, takes on Johan Museo in the middle and Olaf Ludwig on the far right. What a sprint he produced. Well, this could be a result of a stage of the Tour de France, couldn't it? A win for the sprinters. Jamaluddin Abdu Japarov here in Hull, Johan Museo second, Olaf Ludwig third, and the race leader, Max Chiandri, in fourth place. One man not in the result today, but he certainly earned a reputation, was Martin Early of Ireland, who hit a wall just before he started the climb of Rosedale Chimney. Paul Sherwin is on the line with him. Martin, the sun came out for the race today, but it wasn't a lucky day for you. No, the weather was very good, but my luck wasn't very good. Uh, just before the Rosedale chimney, I crashed at the bottom of the climb, just at the, at the start of it. And I went off the road and hit my head on a, on a rock, so it wasn't a very lucky day for me. But uh, I got back up and I chased back on, and I suppose I was lucky enough that they didn't go too hard, and I got back on within, within 10 miles or so. Yeah, well, then you were involved in another crash nearer to the finish. No, it wasn't too bad. I was, I was lucky again, but uh, you know it wasn't as bad as the first time. This is the overall situation, though, tonight. Max Chiandri is now leading by five seconds over Jos van Aert of PDM. Nine seconds back is Adri van der Poel. And the first day's race leader, Hendrik Redant, holds on to that fourth place with a ten-second deficit on Chiandri. 
So the Kellogg's tour now moves off Humberside down to Lincoln, where tomorrow morning we head off towards Coventry, and that's a ride of 114 miles. It will take in the beautiful Vale of Beaver. And if you can't be with us on the route, then don't forget to join us here on Channel 4. But before we say goodnight tonight, let me introduce you now to a rider who isn't in the Kellogg's tour, eight years old Alec Gadd. He is riding from Hull, where he lives, 440 miles very shortly, down to Land's End, in aid of the local Dove House Hospice. Alex, will you make it? Yeah, hopefully. How much money are you going to earn? Hopefully a £1,000 or over. A £1,000, that would be great. Yeah, it would. Very, very best of luck. We wish you well. I know the riders in the Kellogg's tour do as well. He's got Max Shandy's autograph already. Until tomorrow night, goodbye. <laughs>